Hey, welcome to another game development tutorial where we're recreating The Legend of Zelda in Game Maker. And today we are actually going to create some state transitions called a finite state machine using the title screen like this that you see, The Legend of Zelda title screen. And then it's going to fade into the, what we call, I'm going to call it the backstory or the item screen, which is it starts scrolling that backstory from the, the very, very bottom. Um, which happens after a certain amount of time. And then after that, if if you let this run for a little bit longer, it's actually going to scroll those items. Let's, let's watch that real quick. And then from there, if we were to hit the start button, we actually go to the, the select screen. And after that, we actually go to the, the world. So there's a way for us to control all of that um, using what's called a finite state machine that I'm going to explain, but it's also going to give us some really cool control over the game and fix some slight bugs that we've seen in our game previously. And I'm going to do this one more time. There's also another condition here. If you, if you don't wait and you just go ahead and hit the start button, it automatically takes you to the select screen. So I'm going to show you how to do all of that in Game Maker. Now to get this tutorial going, um, cause there's a lot to cover. I went ahead and set up some helper stuff. One is, uh, I created a folder called temp where I'm keeping placeholders for all those screens. So I've got the title screen and you'll notice it doesn't have any of the animations and I, we'll start off with that and polish this over time. I have the select screen and I have the item screen. Okay. And then what I did with those is if you go down here to rooms, I added three rooms. One is called room title. And just for those that are trying to follow along, um, it's uh, width is 256 um, and height is 232 and I set the room speed to 60. I also added the game object to this title screen or object game. Uh, and because it's persistent, I didn't add it in the other uh, screens. The background is set to the Zelda, um, which you do here for those trying to follow along. So anyway, I did something very similar to the item screen. Um, the background's just set to that that backstory. Same width, same height, uh, speed is 60. Again, no object uh, game needed here. And lastly, added the room select, um, added that background, everything's the same here. Um, lastly, uh, what I added to get the, the everything going is the state machine code and some initial states. So this is what we're about to go into. Let's start this whole thing off by me explaining a little bit more about a state machine. The simplest way I can explain it is a state machine allows you to be in one state at a time. And an example I can give is a human. If you're, if you're sitting in a chair, your state is sitting. And then let's say something triggers you to stand and you go ahead and stand. And when you're standing, you're in the standing state. And then from there, you have a couple of choices. You can be, you can say, I'm going to walk, I'm going to run, I'm going to jump. So those are three different states that you go, you can go to, but let's say you can only do that as long as you're standing. If you're sitting, you can't do those other states. So in our code, if we were to represent that in code, when you're in the sitting state and uh, you can stay sitting or you can trigger the standing state, but you cannot trigger going to the jumping, walking, or running state. Those can only be triggered in the standing state. And if you're, let's say you're walking, you could go to the running state, but you can't go to the sitting state, so on and so forth. That's one way of looking at this. And that's what this code does. We, we made a simple version of that using a switch statement here, and you can be in level. And when you're in that state, only this code right here, which controls the view of the player, can run. None of the other code will run. And then this would be our trigger saying, Hey, if they hit the start button, let's go to the menu transition state. And then we break out of this and we go then to the menu transition. So we already have a, a state machine, but what I'm going to introduce you to is a slightly more sophisticated and it's not that much more sophisticated way of doing this using scripts, um, to control everything. Um, and we're going to include a timer that tells us how long we've been in a state so we can do things like, this intro screen where after a certain amount of time you can then it will automatically transition to the next state okay so let's go ahead and get to it the first thing i'm going to show you is this state init so these are the three 
scripts that we're going to need that I've already created. One is state init, and this is for initializing the code that you need in, in uh, a state machine. Three variables. State, we're going to default it to zero. State time, default that to zero too. And then state changed, and we're going to default that to, to false. So these are going to store what state are we currently in. Um, state time is going to tell us how long, how much time has elapsed while we've been in that state. And then there's a co piece of code here in a minute we'll go over, which is switch state. Um, has the state changed? So let's go to that real quick. Let's go to state switch. This is pretty simple. It just passes in a state and it switches to that state. It says, hey, this is my new state. We're going to reset the time back to zero. And now we're going to flag it to say the state's changed. And then the last script is state process. This is run every step event um, in the object that you have this in. The first time you run this and you pass in a state, if the state was equal to zero, meaning this is the first time we've ever done this, um, we'll go ahead and set the state. Otherwise, it's going to skip this um, and it's going to just execute whatever state was already equal to this. Um, and this is a script we're running. So we're going to be passing in scripts. And when that, when that code um, executes, it's either going to run that state over and over or we're going to run the switch state and it's going to change states on us, which then this is where this comes into play. As long as the state hasn't changed, we'll increment the timer up. So it'll go from zero to whatever. And then we'll reset the flag back to false. Okay, so that's everything we need. Now we need to use this. Let me show you how to use this. We're going to go to our create event in our object. And instead of saying state equals in level, we're going to take this out and we're going to say state init. And this just initializes our variables the very, very first time. Now we're going to go to our step event. Instead of using the switch statement, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and cop, um, comment this code out because we're not going to use this anymore. And this is going to be pretty surprising the first time you see this, but all we're going to do is we're going to say state process and let's pass it our first state. So in the case when we start this game, the first state we're going to do is called state game title. Okay. So what I'm passing in here is a reference to a script. Um, and just so you know, if you pass this in without the parentheses at the end, so if I did this, it would run the script. If I take these off, this will just assign it to a variable. That, that it's being passed into. So it's not gonna actually run that code. This is the only piece of code that you're gonna have in the step event. All this is gonna go away. So now let's go to this. So state game title, that is what I set up here under my folder called states and game. So I'm organizing all the states for my game into these state scripts right here. And I'm prefixing it with st for state and then underscore game for the game states. So I could have say player states or enemy states or something like that. And I do something similar, st underscore player, st underscore enemy. In this case, the title. So this is new. And what we're gonna say here is we're on the title screen. And what we can do is say, if input.start, let's go to a different state. We're also gonna change room. So we're gonna say room, go to, I'm going to say room underscore select. So if they hit the start button, we're going to go to the room, the select uh, menu. And then we're going to switch states. We're going to say switch, or actually you start with state, switch. And the state that we want to switch to now is called state game. And we've already got them here, but we're going to go to the select. So we're going to move to that state. Okay. I'm going to copy and paste this. Um, we're going to do something similar. So instead of this, this is where my state timer is going to go. I'm going to say uh, state time is greater than, let's say, let's say two seconds. Uh, we'll, we'll say five seconds. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to say five times room speed, right? So if the state time is greater than that, we're going to go to a different room. We're going to go to the items room. room items, and we're going to go to the items state. 
uh no um items do i have that i have not created that so let's create that real quick so we'll create a script we'll say state game items okay so now we can put that here so we're going to switch to that state um, i'm going to copy all this so that we're actually done with the title screen for now um, so if they hit start, we'll go to the room select. Otherwise, if it takes longer, we'll go to the room items. So let's go, let's go to room items. And we're going to do something similar. If they hit the start button, we're still going to go to room select. It's the same exact thing. Um, but at this time, if the timer goes uh, for more than five seconds, we're going to go back to room title, which is actually what happens in the game. And then we'll go back to the state. Okay, let's test this real quick because that's that's uh, we just want to make sure all the code works. It's always a good thing to do. Okay, so we have our title screen here. Let's see if after five seconds, if it moves to the states, uh, the items room, and it does. And then after five seconds, it should actually go back. So you can see it's going back and forth. Now, if I hit the control button, which is representing our start button, um, it's going to the select screen. Now, nothing's going to happen here because we have no code in here. But now you can already see that we have um, the ability to, to deal with the timer and our start button and manage where we go. Now, I am going to caution you guys. There is uh, one thing we need to do here. Uh, let's go back to our, our title state. Um, if you press the start button here and it moves to the next state, it's going to register you clicking the start button. So in our item screen, it's immediately gonna register that and try to take you to um, the next screen. Um, so actually in this case, uh, it would be the select screen. We would have some code here. It would automatically register that. So here, what I recommend is you do something very similar to the state time down there is give it a second let's say greater than, um, we'll just say five frames, then register the start button. Um, and this actually helps a, a lot. I've, I've done some tests and you can you can put whatever however many frames you want here, but that gives the player enough time to let go of the start button um, and not register it again. So we'll actually put that here as well. We're gonna put that everywhere that we have um, input start. So let's copy this and we're gonna to go to our select screen now. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna say if I'm pasting in the state time is greater than five seconds and they hit the start button, we're gonna to go to room, rooms, and the game state is gonna be in game or in level. So we've got that. Now we need to do our in level. And we're gonna say if, well, so when we're in level, this is where this code actually needs to be copy and pasted. Now we're gonna go back to our switch statement and copy everything that was in the in level. Let's format it, shift tab to bring it all back. So now it's gonna follow the player. Um, and it's gonna do all this stuff. Now we're gonna say if if input start, again, put the state time is greater than five seconds and they hit input start, what we're gonna do is, state switch, um, state game, min trans. So we'll, we're gonna do the menu transition Okay, and then we're gonna go add the menu transition now to copy all this code from the menu transition that we did a couple episodes ago. Now we're gonna go to the min trans and we're gonna copy that code in here. Spread this out. Okay, keep all that the same, but here's, here's where it's different. We're gonna say, instead of this, we're going to say switch Oh, I keep doing that backwards. State switch. And um, this one we're going to go back to 
state game in menu. Let's copy and paste this, and then this one's going to be in level. Okay, so the last one that we need to deal with is, is this one, in menu. So in our in menu, we didn't have any code except for the if statement. So we'll just, um, actually, let's copy it from our in level. It's the exact same thing. We'll do that. Now let's go to in menu, add the code here. And now all of this should work. Okay, so we've got our start screen. I'm gonna hit control. We're in our select screen, hit control. Now we're in our uh, our actual level. So if I hit control again, the menu comes down, hit it again, it comes back up, still able to move. Now I'm gonna show you again. Um, let's. I'm gonna stop this and I'm gonna point something out. I said in a, in a past episode when we, um, when you got into that level, you'll notice that it, it kind of scrolls over to link. So when I press start here and it, watch now, when I hit start, it's gonna scroll over to link. Let's fix that. We can do that now because we have the mechanism to do that. And what's happening is um, if we go to in level, so this code from, if you remember from that episode that we did this is we identify where the target view should be and we snap it there and we just say, hey, this is the target X view and the target Y view. And then we, we transition towards that so that we get that room transition when you switch rooms. But if you're just coming into the room and this is the first time, there's no reason to slide over there. We can actually just snap it there. And what we would do is here we can just say, if state time is equal to zero, we can just take x view zero is equal to target x view like this. Um, I'll copy and paste this so I have less writing to do, but switch this to Y view and Y view. And so what this is gonna do now is saying, hey, that very first time we enter this room, just snap the, immediately snap the view to here. And then after that, when we switch rooms and stuff like that, go ahead and slide the room over um, time. So let's test that out. So. Now, when I go from that select menu to that immediate next room, I should just show up right there. See, so now that works, but this still works as well. So this gives us a lot more control and abilities. Um, and I know some of you have actually pointed out that um, in the actual game, you shouldn't be able to do this. We can, we'll fix that at some other time. Um, that's part of the polish, but I wanted to show you that you can really do a lot of awesome stuff in here. Um, and we don't actually need any of this code anymore. That's that switch statement just goes away. This runs everything. And now we've compartmentalized all of our code. So I can go here and say, Hey, what's, what's going on when we're in that state? What states can I switch to? Um, creates some, it creates a really clean, um, way of doing this. There's fancier stuff that we can do. You can you can take the finite state machine to other levels, but this is really where I want to take you guys, and now we can use this in different parts of our game. So hopefully that made sense. Um, please no, let me know what you think. Also, uh, again, I provided all of the resources to this episode, including the images and the download to this Game Maker file on my Patreon page. See, see the link below and give me some feedback. All right, thanks, guys. I'll see you in the next episode.